you'll notice that our fruit tree rows aren't exactly straight. Now we did do that on purpose. It's not because we marked them out when we were drunk or anything like that. Um, what we did, we used a laser level to mark the rows out on the contour line. Uh, the idea behind that is that we build the rows up a little bit and that'll trap any topsoil that washes down the hill when we get heavy rain. You can already see it working pretty well on the first couple of rows that we planted, so we're pretty happy with how that's going so far. We've actually been pretty surprised at how quickly some of our trees have started to produce fruit for us. Um, there's the sugar apple that you see in the introduction. I think there's three fruit on that little tree, and the mulberries we're pretty confident will give us some fruit in springtime. And then there's this little fella, he's one of our native bush tucker plants. He's called the blue tongue. It's a shrub, evergreen shrub that grows to two to three metres. It gets small, sweet, bluey black fruit that um, stain your tongue blue, hence the name blue tongue. It's covered in flower buds at the moment, so hopefully we'll get some fruit off it before too long. It is frost tender, so hopefully the frost won't make it far enough up the hill here that it affects this one, but we'll see how we go. Wish you'd come and give me a hand instead of standing around under that tree. That looks like hard work. Yeah, you should give it a go. Mate, I'm just a cameraman. I've got important work to do. Yeah, well, make sure you do that job properly and make me look good on YouTube, eh? Say I'm a cameraman, not a magician. Go on, get out of here. Clear to pass through the scrub where we'll run the electric fence for the pigs. Most people keep their pigs in electric seem to be happy with two wires but I'm not convinced that ours are scared of the wires yet so I'm going to run three wires for the time being. It'll probably be another week or two before we move them in yet. I'd like them to be big enough that they won't be an easy target if we get any stray dogs through. One of our favourite ways to end a day of hard work is to kick back with a couple cold drinks by a bonfire and watch the sun go down. Life doesn't get any better really. So the chickens have spent their first night in their new house. I didn't get a chance to finish it totally, but I'll work on that when I'm home again. I still have to put the dividers in the nest boxes. Um, as you can see, it's just one big empty box at the moment, but they'll make do with that. The water is still a, just a 20 litre drum with little cups on it, little floats on it, in them. Uh, that'll be mounted onto the trailer eventually so we won't have to pick it up and move it as well. It'll just come along with the trailer. I think I'm going to put two of them on the trailer. Um, they should be right for water for a few weeks then. I've still got to figure out a better idea for the feeders as well. It's just a simple PVC feeder that we fill up and they just reach in and get what they need. Uh, it's nearly empty at the moment. And we're expecting some rain so I'm not going to fill it up because it's out in the weather. We just feed them underneath the trailer for now. Um, the other storage box has got to go along this side. It's partly built up in the shed, but I'll attach it later on. And I think I'll incorporate the feeder into that so it's out of the weather. Apart from that, it all seems to be working pretty well. 
chooks seem happy with it and they'll be safe at night so unfortunately I've got to head back to my full time job today so nothing more will happen here for about a week until I get home again.